Welcome. In this film, we'll examine common causes of death involving skid steer loaders. We'll also consider methods for preventing these incidents. Workers use skid steer loaders to move heavy materials at job sites. These versatile machines can be equipped with a variety of attachments, including buckets for moving bulk materials and forks for moving pallets. Skid steer loaders get their name from the steering mechanism, which causes them to skid while turning. Controls and operating procedures vary from one model to another. In this loader, the wheels are operated by hand controls. With both controls pushed forward, the loader moves ahead. With both controls pulled back, the loader moves in reverse. The loader turns when the controls are moved in separate directions. Skid steer loaders have hydraulically operated lift arms that raise and lower attachments. In this loader, the lift arms are controlled by foot pedals. One pedal raises and lowers the lift arms. The other pedal tilts the attachment. Again, controls vary, so workers must become familiar with each loader they use. In this model, for instance, there are no foot pedals. Instead, hand levers control all functions of the lift arms, tilt, and wheels. Most skid steer loaders are designed so operators must step over attachments and enter from the front. Workers have been killed when they accidentally activated the loader controls during entry. To keep this from happening, loaders may be equipped with interlocks that disable all controls until the operator is seated. For example, interlocks on this loader prevent lift arms and wheels from moving unless the operator is in the seat with the door closed and safety belt latched. This loader does not have a door. Instead, interlocks prevent operation unless the worker is seated with the lap bar pulled down. Many workers have been killed by skid steer loaders. We'll consider the most common causes of death as identified by the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. According to researchers at NIOSH, the most common cause of death on skid steer loaders is being struck by lift arms and attachments. Less common but still important causes of death include being crushed when loaders tip over or drive off ledges, being run over or run into by moving loaders, and being struck by falling objects. Let's begin by considering the most common cause of death, being struck by lift arms or attachments. To understand how this can happen, we'll examine an actual case 
reported by scientists Wayne Johnson and Risto Rautianen. According to the report, a farmer started up a loader on a cold winter day. Unknown to the farmer, the bucket control was jammed in the up position by ice that had built up under the pedals earlier that morning. When the loader started, the jammed control caused the bucket to rise. The farmer could not get the bucket to go down, so he turned off the loader and then got out. From outside the cab, he reached in to clean the pedals through an access slot directly under the raised bucket. As he loosened the pedals, the hydraulic controls moved. This caused the bucket to slam down, crushing him against the front of the loader. When his wife found him, he was unconscious and his skin had turned blue. His wife and another worker tried to raise the bucket, but couldn't. Emergency workers eventually freed him, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. To prevent incidents such as this, workers must never position themselves under raised components unless those components have been properly supported. Many loaders are equipped with specially designed supports that will keep lift arms from falling during maintenance. On some loaders, supports must be positioned by an outside worker while an operator remains at the controls. On this loader, for instance, an outside worker first removes a retaining pin from the support bar while the lift arms are safely lowered. After the worker has moved away, the operator raises the lift arms. Gravity causes the support bar to fall into place and the outside worker secures it with a retaining pin. The lift arms are now safely supported. On some loaders, mechanical supports can be activated entirely by the operator using a lever inside the cab. Ironically, the loader involved in the earlier fatality was equipped with many of these safety devices. For instance, the interlock in the seat belt might have kept the bucket from falling, but the farmer had disabled it because he found the seat belt to be inconvenient. Since lift arms and attachments cause many deaths, we'll consider some additional ways these incidents may happen. As reported by OSHA, many deaths have occurred when workers position themselves in crush points under lift arm mechanisms while repairing or servicing loaders. The workers were killed when hydraulic systems unexpectedly lost pressure, causing the lift arms to fall. They died simply because they did not support the lift arms before placing their bodies in harm's way. Other crushing deaths have happened when workers leaned out the sides of cabs to check the surroundings or to examine tires and other loader components. These workers died when the lift arms slammed down, usually because the controls were bumped or because the hydraulic systems failed. To prevent operators from leaning out, many loaders have glass windows or metal side screens. 
These window guards should always be in place when the loader is operated. Workers have also been killed when leaning out the fronts of cabs during operation. As an example, let's consider an incident reported by NIOSH. According to the report, a worker was operating a skid steer loader at a rock crushing facility. A bolt came loose from the bucket's attachment point and the worker decided to tighten it. With the engine running, the worker raised the lap bar and stood up in the cab. He then lowered the bar and jammed it in place. This action defeated the interlock that normally kept the lift arms from moving when the operator wasn't seated. Next, the worker leaned out the front of the cab and engaged the hydraulic controls to align the bucket. The bucket raised farther than the worker anticipated and he was crushed against the top of the cab. Co-workers freed him, started CPR, and contacted emergency services. He was taken to a local hospital and then flown to a major trauma center. He survived at the trauma center for 13 days, but then died from internal injuries sustained in the incident. To prevent tragedies such as this, repairs and service work must always take place with the engine shut off and the lift arms lowered or properly supported. In addition, safety interlocks should never be defeated. This includes interlocks on doors, seat belts, and lap bars, to name a few. In still other cases reported by OSHA, workers have been crushed by lift arms and attachments when they bumped controls while climbing in and out of cabs with the engines running. Some of these incidents happened because workers intentionally defeated the safety interlocks. In other cases, the interlocks failed due to mechanical defects. To repeat, interlocks should never be disabled. Interlock mechanisms should also be checked regularly for defects according to instructions in the operator's manual. As a final example of crushing by lift arms and attachments, CDC, NIOSH, and OSHA have all reported cases in which workers were killed while reaching in to operate controls from outside the cab. These incidents have occurred when workers reached in to raise attachments or reached in to lower them. In most of these cases, the interlocks had been intentionally defeated. Although lift arms and attachments are the most common causes of deaths on skid steer loaders, data published by NIOSH and OSHA indicate workers have also been killed when loaders tipped over or drove off steep edges. To illustrate, we'll consider a case reported by NIOSH. According to the report, a farmer was using a loader to fill in ruts on a dirt road near the edge of a steep hill. He accidentally backed over the edge of the road and the loader rolled down the slope. The farmer was not wearing his seat belt and he was thrown from the cab. He was crushed and killed when the loader rolled over him. In other cases reported by OSHA, workers have died while using loaders to remove debris from buildings during demolition. 
In many of these cases, the workers fell great distances with their loaders after driving through openings in walls and floors. Operators are not the only victims of skid steer loader incidents. Bystanders and co-workers have also been killed when nearby loaders tipped. To reduce the risk of rollovers, operators must keep off steep hills and stay away from drop-offs caused by bluffs, gullies, ditches, and excavations. Also, workers should never operate loaders near unguarded openings in walls and floors. Co-workers and bystanders must be kept away when loaders are being operated. Since loaders often tip when attachments are raised, loads should be kept as low as possible while driving. Safety features on modern loaders may reduce the risk of injury when rollovers do occur. For instance, protective cabs known as rollover protection structures or ROPs are designed to resist collapse during rollovers. ROPs can prevent deaths, but only if operators wear seat belts so they aren't thrown out of the cab during accidents. Work practices for maintaining control of the loader and avoiding injury include loading the bucket steadily and at slow speed. To reduce the risk of tip overs, it is also important to travel with the load close to the ground. To further reduce the risk of tip overs, operators should turn steadily and at a safe speed on level terrain not raising the load until the dump point is reached. After placing the load, operators should move clear of obstructions and lower attachments before traveling any further. Our next category of incidents includes cases in which workers are run over or run into by skid steer loaders. A number of these deaths have been reported by NIOSH and OSHA. We'll begin this section with a case described by NIOSH. According to the report, an operator was using a loader to level out gravel in front of a trailer at a work site. Another worker stepped out of the trailer and walked onto the gravel where the loader was being used. Apparently, the operator and the other worker did not see each other. The loader backed up, struck the worker, and knocked him down. Unaware that anything had happened, the operator continued backing up. The loader ran over the worker's upper body and dragged him for some distance. Sadly, he was killed. To prevent incidents such as this, fences should be used to separate heavy equipment from workers who may be on foot. Alternatively, portable barricades can be used to create a sturdier barrier. Runovers are especially common when loaders are backing up. Operators should look behind, but the loader's own structures will limit visibility. Backup alarms can help, and co-workers must be trained to stay away from moving equipment. Runovers also occur in other ways. For instance, as in a case reported by OSHA. 
according to the report, a worker was operating a skid steer loader. While the loader was running, a co-worker walked up and told the operator he wanted his gloves, which were in the cab. While reaching in, he bumped a drive control lever. This caused the loader to lunge forward and to the left, striking the co-worker. Before the operator could stop, the co-worker's skull and upper extremities were crushed between the front tire and frame. He died of his injuries. To prevent incidents such as this, co-workers should never approach unless attachments are lowered and the engine has been shut down. As a final example of events that lead to runovers, OSHA has reported cases in which workers were riding as passengers in buckets or other attachments. In many of these cases, the passengers were thrown out when loaders encountered rough terrain or obstacles. They were then run over before the operators could react. These incidents can be prevented by never letting passengers ride on any part of a skid steer loader. Our final category of incidents involves impacts from falling objects, including demolition debris, trees, and bulk materials. A number of these cases have been reported by OSHA. To prevent injuries, co-workers and bystanders should be kept away from work areas where debris could fall, including the front, back, and sides of any walls that are being demolished or material piles that are being moved. Skid steer loaders should also be equipped with cabs that provide falling object protection or FOPs to keep debris from striking the operator. Let's review what we've covered in this film. Skid steer loaders are powerful machines that move heavy materials on job sites. Deaths most often occur when workers are struck by lift arms or attachments. Less common but still important causes of death include rollovers and driving off ledges. runovers, and impacts from falling materials. To prevent lift arm incidents and runovers, Workers should enter and exit only with attachments lowered and the engine shut off. Loaders should be operated only when the worker is seated in the cab with safety belt fastened and interlocks such as lap bars and doors in proper position. Cabs should be equipped with window guards, rollover protection, and falling object protection. Loaders should be operated steadily and at slow speed. Loads should be kept as low as possible while driving. Coworkers and bystanders should be kept away. Loaders should be equipped with backup alarms 
and operators should look behind while driving in reverse. Operators should stay away from steep terrain and ledges. Workers should never place any part of their bodies beneath unsupported lift arms or attachments. Support should be used if maintenance is necessary while lift arms are raised. Finally, passengers should never be allowed. This concludes our video on skid steer loader safety. Injuries from loaders can be devastating. However, operators can prevent these incidents by observing precautions such as those discussed in this film.